Hello students, looking at current affairs for 18th May, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these 10. It actually covers important news items from Sunday's newspaper too. So here you have the first news, lockdown extended, states will take a call on infection zones. So center has extended the nationwide lockdown, so as it was stated, lockdown 4.0 has been announced now which will commence after the lockdown presently was to end on 17th May, so lockdown point of commences now, which will go on till 31st May. So the first lockdown was imposed on 24th March and now this fourth time extension takes it up to 31st May. But considerable flexibility has been given to states in deciding the red, green and orange zones of COVID-19 intensity. So many restrictions have been eased as such to interstate transport and movement of buses and cars has been allowed. Opening of all shops except those in malls and containment zones has been allowed. Delivery of even non-essential items through online shopping platforms have been allowed. Barber shops and salons can also open. There is 33, There was 33% restriction on workforce in offices which was announced when lockdown 3.0 was announced but now that has also been done away with. And the National Disaster Management Authority actually had directed states and central government to continue with the lockdown measures to contain the spread of novel coronavirus. So lockdown has been further extended. You can see metro systems, domestic, international, air travel in, in, will remain suspended. Even auto rickshaws, cab aggregators and private taxis can uh, apply with permission from local authorities but there are also strict guidelines are there on maintaining social distancing, number of passengers they can carry. Even special train services will operate on limited routes. Then also the practice of work from home the government says should be followed to the extent possible and even if people are going out for work, work hours should be staggered means there should not be a rush out when you know, like morning hour of rush hour should not be there, staggered work hours should be there and uh, also thermal scanning, hand wash, sanitizers at all entry and exit points and common areas and also at all workplaces and sensitive locations should be provided for. Also, Ministry of Home Affairs has said that Arogya Setu mobile app, which is a powerful tool to facilitate quick identification of persons infected by COVID-19 or at risk from being infected and should be, uh, should be used. Like it is asking offices and workplaces and employers so to make best efforts to ensure that the app is installed by all employees having compatible mobile phones. So that is there. Then on uh, even interstate movement of vehicles, it has been allowed, but then it will be based on uh, consent, mutual consent of concerned states and union territories. So when within the boundaries of the state as such, that states would decide how the movement of vehicles would be. Also, all shops will be open, but then they have to ensure social distancing, six feet distance between among customers and also not to have more than five persons at one time. you can see. So, all essential activities will be allowed in containment zones too, but strict perimeter control has been emphasized on by the Ministry of Home Affairs. Means, when there are, when there is zoning done, but then interzoning movement would result in the, the entire exercise being futile. So, no movement of persons would be allowed across zones except for medical emergencies or for maintaining supply of essential goods and services. Also, schools, colleges, educational institutions, hotels, restaurants, except canteens, at bus stops, railway stations and airports will remain shut. And large places of uh, public gathering would also be shut. Restaurants have been allowed for home delivery. So, restaurants can uh, operate for home delivery of food items. But public gatherings such as cinema halls, shopping malls, gyms, entertainment parks, you know, social, political, cultural, religious congregations, everything has been uh, has been uh, prohibited and sports actually sports complexes will be permitted to have sports activities but there will be no spectators means there will be no crowd watching the sport so that has been allowed so this is lockdown 4.0 the gist of what we just discussed what has been allowed and what is not also vulnerable groups like those above 65 years of age pregnant women and children below 10 years have to remain at home and night curfew for non-essential services remain in force from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Then next is government to throw open defense production and coal sectors. 
So this is the fourth tranche of Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhyan which has been announced now. The It was actually announced on Saturday, was in news on Sunday. We will also see the fifth tranche which has been announced on Sunday, so which is in the newspaper today. So we will be covering both. So in the fourth tranche, what has been announced is indigenization of defense production. So it calls for indigenization of defense production and banning of import of some weapons and platforms. So it is actually talking of a negative list which will be not allowed to be imported, others would be. So that is there. Then also there are further defense related uh, reforms which have been announced. We will discuss them in detail below. And then second is regarding mining. So in mining, uh, commercial mining has been introduced in the coal sector, mineral sector has been liberalized. Third is regarding airspace, airspace restrictions have been eased and private investment has been encouraged in space and atomic energy projects. So these are the reforms being announced in these sectors in the fourth tranche of Atmanirbhar Abhyan. So it's actually not a economic stimulus, not an economic stimulus package, rather it focuses more on industry reforms than any sort of economic stimulus. So labor unions across ideological spectrum including RSS based Bharati Mazdoor Sangh have slammed the reform measures and they say this was less of a stimulus and more of industrial reforms which have been announced as such at any time. They, they could be announced any time. They, they have used this crisis it is said by Ernst Young chief policy advisor who is also a member of advisory council to 15th finance commission. He says that they have used, the government has used the crisis time to utilize the ordinance route or other ways to fast track industrial reforms which could have faced resistance otherwise. And the sectors covered are of strategic importance and the policies would be rolled out over 3 to 6 months. But then what is the immediate support which has been provided to the economy during the lockdown that is not provided for. Also, uh, uh, he, he said that only budget, only direct budgetary cost which is there in the fourth tranche is of 8,100 crore which has been provided as a, a hike of 30% viability gap funding to boost private investment in social sector infrastructure. So, this is uh, an actual announcement remaining everything is reforms in various sectors which have been announced. So, in defense sector what the government has announced is there will be a negative list of weapons and platforms that cannot be import, imported and uh, remaining can be imported and even this negative list it is said will be reduced. So, uh, uh, every time you know, domestic capacities grew, so there will be a reduction in number of items which can be imported. So, this is there and this negative list it is said would be worked out in consultation with Department of Military Affairs which is headed by Chief of Defence Staff, Mr. Bipin, General Bipin Rawat. Then also the finance minister called for a separate budget provision for domestic capital procurement which would help reduce the defense import bill and encourage domestic manufacture. So domestic capital procurement means uh, any defense equipment which is being procured from within the country. So to encourage that there will be a separate budget provision for that. So this is there. Then FDI limit in defense manufacturing under automatic route has been raised, it was 49%, now it has become 74%. Earlier 100% FDI was allowed but on a case to case basis and now this is automatic route FDI would be allowed up to 74%. So this is there, then also uh, ordnance factory boards would be corporatized. So ordnance factory boards are the ones which, which manufacture defense equipments. So, they would be corporatized, it is said they would not be privatized, means they will become a corporate and will be listed on the stock market. So, this will improve the autonomy, efficiency and accountability. Also, it was in 2019 itself, late 2019 that a high level committee was set up by the defense minister to examine the aspects of corporatization of ordnance factory boards and work out the modalities. So, now in the fourth tranche, this has also been announced, ordnance factory boards is headquartered in Kolkata and has 41 factories spread across the country functioning under it and itself it functions under the Department of Defense Production under Defense Ministry. Then Finance Minister has also announced for setting up a project management unit to support contract management in defense sector and also it called for realistic setting of general staff quality requirements. So qualitative requirements which are required. So that should be realistically said because a lot of time is spent on searching for suppliers and if there are unrealistic quality requirements set as the finance minister says then uh, those who meet all the requirements 
are very few and then the, there is a single vendor situation and the whole process becomes futile. So she calls for realistic setting of general staff quality requirements, qualitative requirements and also a revision of defense procurement procedure would take place that has been announced. Then next is related to mining. So the reforms in mining announced are government monopoly on coal would be removed. Commercial mining would be introduced in coal and any private player can bid for coal block. So actually private players were allowed to bid for coal block. This has already been a reform undertaken. But then only captive consumers means those consumers who are going to use the coal which they are bidding for for their own end use ownership with any ownership could bid for coal blocks. So they can use it for that specific purpose only. But now it has become open to all private players. And it is said almost 50 blocks will be offered immediately with no eligibility conditions for bidding apart from upfront payment with the CV. Then in civil aviation sector, six more airports are said to be put on auction on private public private partnership mode and additional private investment will be invited at 12 airports. And this will bring in you can see 13,000 crore as such for Airports Authority of India. Then in the space sector, Mr. Dharaman has promised to create a level playing field for private players in space sector. So they will be allowed to use ISRO facilities and participate in future projects on space travel and planetary exploration. We will see the space sector in detail below too. So we will see private players will be allowed in space sector. So this is the gist of what we just discussed regarding coal commercial mining being allowed. Even minerals, you know, uh, composite exploration come mining come production regime for minerals will be announced. Defense we already saw, negative list would be there, FDI increased, ordnance factory board will be corporatized. Civil aviation again, uh, public private partnership is sought here. Power sector, even power sector there are reforms announced which we see in detail below too. The power departments, utilities and distribution companies in union territories will be privatized and it will be in line with the tariff policy which is to be announced. Space, privatization of space has been introduced even atomic energy. Research reactor in public private partnership mode would be set up for production of medical isotopes. Then coming to private sector in space. So this was already part of 2017 bill. There was a draft space activities bill 2017 which has not even been introduced in parliament yet. It has not been discussed in parliament. But uh, it was a draft bill which the government has formulated and in it, it called for greater participation of private sector in various space activities. So, government had already announced its intention in 2017. So, future projects for travel in outer space or exploration of new planets will be open to private sector. So, government will ease geospatial data policy also to make sure remote sensing data is more widely available to tech entrepreneurs with safeguards in place. This is the plan. So, critics of the bill point out that there is uh, does not have a provision for creation of an independent space regulator. So, ISRO is functioning and there will be private players functioning too, but there is a need for an independent space regulator to look into it. So, that is highlighted by critics. And also, there was already an announcement in July 2019 budget of creating a public sector company by ISRO called New Space India Limited. Already, there is an existing company under ISRO which is Antriksh which is the commercial wing of ISRO, which allows small satellite technology to be transferred, you know, which allows uh, satellite services being provided to uh, outsiders. Uh, other countries also provided services by India. So, that is the commercial arm of ISRO, Antriksh. And New Space India Limited, which is a separate com public sector company proposed, that was to allow small satellite technology to be transferred to private industry. And even ISRO's uh, workhouse, main workhorse, that is the main uh, entity of that is PSLV, Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, its development would also be outsourced to private sector. So, for that purpose, this public sector company had been proposed in the July budget. So, this is New Space India Limited, a public sector enterprise which is incorporated as new commercial arm of Department of Space. So, already there is Antarish, a commercial arm, and now this is a new commercial arm which was announced in budget 2019. 20. So, this is to harness India's space power commercially, it was also a function of Antriksh. So, it will tap the benefits of research and development carried out by ISRO. It will spearhead commercialization of space products including production of launch vehicles, transfer of technologies and even marketing of space products. So, this is there. So, it wants to scale up industry participation in Indian space programs. So, 
Department of Space registered its second commercial arm now and this was done on 6 March 2019 and it was incorporated for commercially utilizing research and development activities by ISRO. So, to be responsible for production and manufacturing of commercially successful small satellite launch vehicles, polar satellite launch vehicles, craft launchers via technology transfer mechanisms. Antriksh was set up in 1992 and it markets products and services of ISRO to foreign nationals too foreign countries as such. Then next is multiple conditions on discounts. So central government has imposed multiple conditions on state governments and their power distribution companies to avail themselves of benefit of 90,000 crore package which has been announced. This is called special long term transition loan to discounts for COVID-19. So power distribution companies which are called discounts. So each state has their own power distribution company. So they have their dues which they have not paid to power producers, both belonging to central public sector undertakings and even private sector power producers. So when these uh, state distribution companies have not been able to pay their dues, they need liquidity, they need assistance and that is being provided. So there are distribution companies that even so power production then happens transmission and distribution. So there are transmission companies also as well as distribution companies who have uh, loans. So now they will be paid the loan will have a tenure, they will be able to avail loans of a tenure of up to 10 years, including moratorium of not more than 3 years, which can go up to 13 years. So, they will be provided these loans, but then they should have, the, they should fulfill certain criteria. They should submit an unconditional and irrevocable guarantee from the respective state governments with due approval from state finance departments before the first disbursement. So then they will be provided this assistance by the central government, the loan. So discounts should have arrangements for self-assessment by end consumers and, district, and digital payment of bills should be there. Apart from even smart or prepaid meters being installed at the premises or even government departments and attached offices. So this is insisted on because they will get their dues regularly with smart or prepaid meters it is said. So this is there and if the states fail to pay the power bill and subsidy within 60 days of the due date then it will be charged with an additional interest of 0.25% on the outstanding loan amount. So this is the condition with which loans are being provided to distribution companies across the country. Then next is government hikes borrowing limits for state to 5%. So this is the fifth and final tranche of the Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhyan stimulus package which has been announced by the finance minister. So it now centers has agreed to the demands from states to hike their borrowing limits from 3% to 5% of their GDP because of the COVID-19 crisis. But then there are conditions that they have to implement specific reforms related to ration portability, ease of doing business, power distribution and urban local bodies. So reforms in these sectors have to be implemented to be able to avail this uh, higher borrowing requirement. Also government has announced additional 40,000 crore allocation for MGNREG, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act and a new policy welcoming private companies in every sector of industry. So public sector enterprises would be limited now to strategic sectors only and private companies are being uh, welcomed in every sector. So, also some changes in Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code and Companies Act have been made to provide relief to corporate enterprises. Total package amount which has been announced, it is said, is of 21 lakh crore, in all, uh, including the, all the tranches of the Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhyan. Uh, but then it is heavy on credit related measures, means it is providing loans. 8 lakh crore out of this also are also liquidity enhancing measures by RBI, not by the government. So, that is also added up in this figure which the government announced and also it is said around 20.97 lakh exact figure of stimulus package which accounts for 9.8 percent of GDP. Out of this only 2.2 lakh crore can be traced to direct additional budgetary cost to the central exchequer. Others are uh, already like the 1.55 lakh crore is already what has been budgeted. It's, these are budgetary expenditures and remaining 85% is in the form of RBI's liquidity announcement, credit guarantees, insurance schemes or reforms. So they are not really stimulus or relief packages. So out of 20, only 2 means you can say 10% uh, is actually additional budgetary cost. And decision to allocate 40,000 crore to MGNREGA scheme apart from the 61,000 crore allocated in the budget 
has been widely welcomed because with returning migrants unemployment will swell in villages and this scheme would come to the rescue states account for actually 40% of gnrdg expenditure so then the central government scheme will be effective only if states uh, are willing to spend on the scheme as such so that is an important point also finance minister said both central and state finances are stressed and she said gst compensation which is to be paid to states when gst was passed it was a compensation would be paid to states for the first 5 years for any loss in tax which they face uh, because of the reform so this gst compensation has not been paid to any state since december 2019 so this is uh, also there and that's why the borrowing limit of states have been increased uh, make extra resources available to them and it is said states so far have borrowed only 14% of the already authorized limits but then uh, this is 14% of for the uh, is part of the borrowing requirement for the entire year so they have to take care of the entire year so states actually it is said by experts that they are paying high cost for bar market borrowings because central government's cost is of 6% interest as such but states have to pay higher so it would be better if stenter borrows from market and transfer to states is what the former Uh, chief statistician of india economist pranab singh says but central government would not be wanting to take that responsibility so they have extended the borrowing uh, limits of states now also uh, finance minister said that new policy will notify specific strategic sectors in which at least one psu will remain and private companies will be allowed and psus in all other sectors will be privatized even in the strategic sector no more than four psus will be allowed and the rest will be privatized merged or brought under holding companies so privatization of psu has been announced now there will be few buyers because it's a time of global recession so that has also been highlighted by experts also for the health sector finance minister has increased public expenditure including infectious disease hospital blocks in every district and uh, public laboratories in every block but then no financial outlay has been mentioned for this aspect but it has been announced so this is the final tranche of the economic package under the atmanirbhar abhiyan which was announced on sunday so with respect to health states borrowings then for ngnrega and how uh, private sector psu will also be privatized and fresh insolvency proceedings under insolvency and bankruptcy code have been suspended for a year eligible loan signs have been hiked from 1 lakh to 1 crores and covid-19 related debt not triggered defaults firms can list abroad directly so these are some compensations announced for industries so this is the entire break up of the 20 lakh crores package financial package announced by the government under the atmanirbhar abhiyan so how much of it is liquidity direct spending so all that is detailed out here you can see then next is india opposes rejoining rcp over china concerns so rcp is regional comprehensive economic partnership which is a trade deal been negotiated a multilateral trade deal which includes 10 asian members and those members of uh, asian those members with whom asian has a free trade agreement so you can see asian and its six of its external trade partners that is asian plus six also which is india china australia new zealand japan and south korea uh, but now india has opted out of it so these are 16 nations involved now 15 of the india opts out so initially the negotiations were launched in 2011 at the asian summit in jakarta and they went on you know and were expected to be concluded by 2015 but it did not materialize rcp is a huge grouping as you can see it include if it includes india china and asian nations including australia as such too so it is was a huge uh, you can see it contributed uh, it included 3.4 billion people 40% of global trade and was having a total gdp of us 7 the 17 trillion dollars us dollars so it uh, a grouping which comprises 40% of global trade was huge but now I, this is not the case because india has opted out so numbers have reduced so why india opted out you should know that too because uh, it was the last minute decision which was taken because it said this uh, cp grouping will hurt farmers businesses workers and consumers 
so the pact was to be signed amongst all 60 but india opted out the deal required gradual elimination of tariffs by india but then india feared that this would flood indian markets with chinese goods because amongst the rcp grouping all other nations had an fta with china but india did not have an fta with china so without having an fta free trade agreement with china and with rcp indirectly chinese goods would get a free trade agreement and would get entry into india especially agricultural produce from even oceania countries would harm local producers so that's why india decided to opt out so without india rcp accounts for nearly one third of global trade now global gdp now and also they have less than a third of the world's population now. so this is regarding rcp so now actually fresh proposals by india to rejoin the negotiations were made and the deadline for the response has elapsed now but india again reiterated it especially in the global post covid 19 concerns and china over china uh, india's opposition to the group has been strengthened it says and india's experience of trade pacts in the past have also been that because of ftas manufacturing sector in the country gets uh, significantly affected and even presently government has announced atmanirbhar abhiyan make in india policy so an fta would go against that it would hamper those efforts too. so we are not joining rcp again the next is Hall Central Vista project say ex officials so 60 former bureaucrats have written an open letter to the prime minister and housing and urban affairs minister hardeep singh puri asking them to stop the proposed redevelopment of central vista and construction of new parliament so we have discussed central vista quite often in detail it uh, it goes from the india gate till the rajpath so entire rajpath is covered till the rashtrapati bhavan so this central vista redevelopment has been proposed at parliament building as such is also old the ministries do not have proper offices and they're working through old palaces so there was a demand for having an entire parliament being developed and the central vista entire costing was said to be at least 20000 crores but these are initial figures already figures have been escalated before the project has commenced so this is going to hugely inflate and this being done at a time when enormous funds are required for public health system and to provide sustenance to, pe sustenance to people and rebuild the economy taking up this proposal of central vista is uh, quite uh, negative and it said it would be akin to nero fiddling with while rome burns so government you know playing while the country is burning so this is what uh, the 60 former bureaucrats which include retired IS, IPS, IFS, IPS and IRS officers have stated in their open letter. So recently Central Public Works Department actually has announced that it will be floating a tender for the project and has received key proposals also. Approvals have also been provided by Environment Ministry and the Central Vista Committee while the lockdown has been going on. So even the letter says that uh, it's going to affect the environment too because these open spaces actually act as lungs for the Delhi city and uh, they have dense mature tree canopies and they are repository of biodiversity. They have vast lawns here which act as watershed for the city too between the ridge and the Yamuna and if you have construction of large number of multi-storied office buildings and basements take place it will irreversibly change and damage the environment. The next is UP withdraws order on increased working hours. So UP government has withdrawn its recent order increasing daily work hours shifts in manufacturing units from existing 8 hours to 12 hours. So it had passed this notification on 8th May diluting the provisions of the Factories Act of 1948 and increased the work timings. But then this decision was challenged in Allahabad High Court and Allahabad High Court had asked the State Secretary to respond to this, the government to respond to this. Matter was listed for is listed for hearing on 18th May, but now in an order dated 15th May, the Chief State Council has informed the Allahabad High Court that notification to increase the work hours has been withdrawn by UP government. Then next is Afghan President rival signed power sharing deal. So Afghan President Ashraf Ghani and his political rival Abdullah Abdullah have signed the power sharing agreements two months after both declared themselves as the winner of the September 2019 presidential election. You must recollect that we had discussed this how both had their separate swearing, swearing in ceremonies too and they had parallel inauguration ceremonies in March 2020. So now both have uh, formed a joint government. US President Trump had also warned them 
that if they do not come together and reconciliate then the us administration providing them with uh, around 1 billion dollar of assistance would be affected so this uh, agreement now power sharing would be such that mr ghani would remain the president of afghanistan and mr abdullah shall lead the country's national reconciliation high council and even some members of abdullah's team would be included in ashraf ghani's cabinet so this national conciliation reconciliation high council is the authority which will handle and approve all affairs related to afghan peace process and even talks with taliban are due us taliban talks took place and now intra afghan talks were expected to take place so that would also be handled by national reconciliation high council so here you can see regarding the september elections it is mentioned how mr ghani what got more than 50% votes mr abdullah received more than 39% votes according to the election commission but mr abdullah and elections complaint commission charged widespread voting irregularities and both declared themselves presidents and when us president trump announced it would cut 1 billion dollar in assistance to afghanistan if the two do not work out their differences now we see a conciliation government being formed and even a peace agreement would, will be negotiated now so after the us taliban peace agreement been negotiated in feb 2020 it was expected that intra afghan peace negotiation means uh, talks between taliban and afghan government would take place in march but they have not started yet so now after the government in place steps would be taken also afghanistan is suffering because of covid 19 cities are in lockdown but number of tests been conducted here are quite limited so far only 22000 tests have been conducted so the country's healthcare system is also devastated by four decades of war and despite a huge num- amount billions of dollars being provided in international aid afghanistan remains poor you heard the poverty level has soared from 35% in 2012 to more than 55% in 2019 means 55% of afghan population is poor poor, poor means a person who survives on less than 1 dollar a day that is there also successive afghan governments have been accused by international watchdogs of widespread corruption including present afghan president ashraf ghani and lastly you have israel swears in unity government so israel's parliament swore in a new unity government on 17th may led by prime minister netanyahu and his formal rival benny gantz so all, the longest political crisis in israel's history has ended now there were three inconclusive elections and then finally you can see after more than 500 days of political limbo a new unity government has been formed so mr gantz is actually a uh, former army chief too and he is a centrist while uh, uh, netanyahu is a right wing leader so the israeli parliament is called neset it's a 120 member parliament and it has formally approved a three year coalition government so mr netanyahu while even before the vote took place in the neset he vowed to push on with his controversial plans to annex large parts of the occupied west bank he wants to apply israeli sovereignty over west bank settlements so this is going to cause international uproar and inflame tensions in the west bank too which homes nearly 3 million palestinians and some 4 lakhs israelis living in settlements considered illegal under international law so we'll see what further developments take place after unity government has been sworn in in israel so that is it thank you